You remember James O'Keefe? He's the guy who, he's, he's a prankster. He pulled uh, the acorn trick and got them defunded, which just makes me sick to my stomach every time I think about that and the cowardice of the Democrats to not stand up to this punk. And it turns out, of course, they did investigations. He'd heavily edited the video. He showed himself in a pimp outfit walking into the acorn offices. When they look at the unedited video, it turns out he never walked into the office with a pimp outfit. He had doctored the video, right? Then we saw him doctor the Shirley Sherrod video. And then based on that, Shirley Sherrod was instantly fired by the profiles and courage that existed the Obama administration. And then they had to walk that back, and then there was a controversy. So this guy's been up to this for a long time. Now, if CNN was investigating uh, him and, and other conservative groups, not investigating for anything like, oh, we're going to uncover something, more like, hey, wh what's their ideology, how do they conduct business, etc. But O'Keefe saw this as like, oh, yeah, CNN's coming to get me. Oh, I'm going to set them up. <laughs> I'm working on a documentary for months now, and the premise of the documentary is to follow a, a group of young conservatives and to learn more about the young conservative movement. But we were offered the opportunity to meet with James O'Keefe, and he's probably best known for his role in the Acorn videos where he posed as a pimp. And he said that he wanted to meet with us. So I went to Maryland to meet him and his colleague, Izzy Santa. And when I pulled up to the property, Izzy was there waiting for me. And that's when this project took a very strange turn. When I pulled up to the property, Izzy was waiting for me. And she said, I need to talk to you. Can I get in the car? And I was like, okay. So I noticed that she had um, like a little bit of dirt on her face. Her lip was shaking. She seemed really uncomfortable. And I asked her if she was okay. And the, the first thing that she basically said to me was, I'm not recording you. I'm not recording you. Are you recording me? And I was like, no. And she says, I need to tell you something. And I said, okay, every, is everything okay? You're making me nervous. She said, no, no, not everything. Everything's not okay. Um, I, I, I am a moral person. I need to tell you something. Well, what is about to happen? Tell me what is going on. And she said, you're about to be punked. Izzy told me the plan was to bring me close to the dock and then ask me if I would consent to having my meeting with James recorded on an audio recorder. If I said yes, she would get me on the boat where James was waiting and where hidden video cameras were rolling. Why is his goal to get me on the boat? She said, because on the boat, he's gonna be there, dressed up, and he's gonna have strawberries and champagne waiting for you. And he was gonna hit on you the whole time. She said the sole purpose of the punk was to embarrass me and CNN. I went to the backyard to see the boat for myself and to try to meet James, but he didn't get off the boat. So I walked back to my car. Then right before I left, James walked up to me and explained that it would make him feel more comfortable if the so-called interview were recorded. You know, that's just not something I'm comfortable with is to have this conversation recorded. Plus it's not an interview. I mean, we're, I'm just here to try to address your concerns about this upcoming shoot. But um, you ended up wanting me to come all the way out here. You told me we were gonna be at your office and instead you want me to come on some boat with you. And, um, and you want it to be recorded. Those were ground rules you should have set over the phone. And you didn't. And he was like, well, what are you ashamed of? And that's when I said, all right, this is where the conversation ends. And um, I said to him, yeah, it was a pleasure. All right. Now, the person who tipped her off was Izzy Santa. She was the executive director of Project Veritas, which is what uh, James O'Keefe runs. It's an ironic name because, of course, it has nothing to do with the truth. And, uh, of course, she has been stripped of her duties. How dare you tip someone off that we were going to punk her and try to get her on a boat and try to seduce her with hidden cameras? Now, I'm about to tell you what's on the boat, and you're not going to believe it, okay? By the way, uh, O'Keefe throughout this keeps calling uh, Boudreaux in documents that uh, are now public uh, that he had wrote as part of his quote-unquote quote CNN caper. He keeps calling her a bubblehead blonde, uh, you know, ditz, basically. You know that she uh, actually, uh, before she came to CNN, uh, found out the design flaw in tires manufactured by Cooper Tire and Rubber Company as part of her reporting and started an investigation and got the product recalled. Okay, So she's an incredibly legitimate reporter. This guy assumes she's an airhead, what, because she's somewhat attractive, right, or 
fairly attractive. So, and his idea is, well, obviously, if I get her on the boat, she'll go for me. Oh, please. Now, I get a load of this clown. This is, was his list of things that he got and put on the boat in order to seduce her. Unreal. First, he starts out with A, video. Uh, so he, he says, well, number one under that, hidden cams on the boat. So tr number two is tripod, an overt recorder near the bed, an obvious sex tape machine. Okay? So the sex tape machine is to both, I guess, record and to play porn. Okay. B is props. And under B, we ha I guess we have one, two, three. Uh, his numbering system leaves a lot to be desired. Uh, number one, condom jar. You're going to need a whole jar, apparently. Okay. Two, dildos. This guy's a class act, okay? He's bringing a CNN reporter on a boat, and he says he thinks he's going to, in his own crazy mind, he's going to seduce her with dildos, okay? I, the, the whole national media took this guy seriously, okay? Number three is music. A, Alicia Keys. B, 80s romance songs, things uh, that are typically James. Oh, I fear to find out what the hell is typically James. C, avoid Marvin Gaye as too cliche. Oh, Really? Okay, no, because you wouldn't want to be cliche. Number four, lube. Jesus. Number five, ceiling mirror. Number six, posters and paintings of naked women. Because, yeah, because that really turns on women. This guy's the biggest clown in the world. Number seven, playboys and pornographic magazines. Number eight, candles. Classy. Number nine, Viagra and stamina pills. Why, James? You got issues? Okay. Number ten, fuzzy handcuffs. Number eleven, blindfold. Because you know what's not cliched? Fuzzy handcuffs. I like that the one thing he crossed off the list was Marvin Gaye. But fuzzy handcuffs and dildos and the condom jar and the lube, that made it. That was fine. What a preposterous, absurd plan. What was he going to do, release, if his stupid, ridiculous plan had worked? And if she hadn't jumped off the boat, which she probably would have, and it probably would have been false imprisonment to keep her on that boat, what were you going to do? Publish the sex tape? This guy is mental. ACORN, which was an organization that lasted for decades helping the poor get legal representation, find ways to vote, etc., is gone. It's wiped off the face of the earth because of this clown, because the national media and the Democratic Party took this clown seriously. Unbelievable, man.